Hello everyone, this is Mrs. J. We're doing a read aloud today of Bud Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis. We're on chapter four. If you're following along in the book with me, we're on page 31. They hadn't locked the kitchen window. It slid open with just a couple of squeaks. And then I was inside the Amos house, crouched down like a cat burglar. Quick as a rabbit, I looked under the table to see if they'd move my suitcase. It was still there. I got a whole lot calmer when I picked it up and it was the right weight. I didn't think they'd take anything out of it. I couldn't be sure until I looked inside, but I could do that later. I took in a deep breath and looked over at the icebox to see if the shotgun was still there. I let all the air out in a big puff when I saw it. Shucks. You'd think with the Amos's being so doggone mean, they'd worry about leaving a big old gun like that out in the open. What if one of their visitors got real mad at them about something? I unlocked the back door, and I set my suitcase on the first step of the porch so I could make a quick getaway after I was through paying the Amos's back. I opened the screen door real quiet and went back into the house. Fair is fair. The Amos's deserved what they were going to get. I can't all the way blame Todd for giving me trouble, though. If I had a regular home with a mother and father, I wouldn't be too happy about other kids living in my house either. Being unhappy about it is one thing, but torturing kids who are there even though they don't want to be is another. It was my job to make sure other kids who didn't know where their mothers or fathers were didn't have to put up with Todd. My heart started jumping around in my stomach as soon as I reached out for the shotgun. It was a lot longer and heavier than I thought it would be. I lifted it, and I felt how solid and smooth the brown wood was against my shoulder. With it up close to my face like this, I could smell the gray metal of the barrel and the gun oil Mr. Amos used, that Mr. Amos used on it. I aimed the gun at the stove and pretended I was shooting an elephant, or a dragon, or a tiger, or best of all, Todd. I imagined how it would feel to creep into his bed while he was sleeping and put the shotgun barrel right in his nose. After that, I'd have to do some quick moving to get the grown-up Amoses. Unless they were real sound sleepers, a shotgun going off in Todd's room would give them a clue that something was going on. I lowered the gun. These things were just too dangerous to play with or take chances with. So that's why the first part of my revenge plan was to get this gun out of the way. If something went wrong and the Amoses woke up, I didn't want them rushing down to the kitchen to get the gun. I knew they'd shoot me in a flash and tell the home it was an accident. I took the gun outside and I put it on the back porch in a corner where they wouldn't be able to see it until daytime. I felt a lot better with it out of my hands. When I was back in the kitchen, I started opening cupboards looking for drinking glasses. The first one I opened had the jelly jar they'd given to me to drink out of at supper time. I walked over to the sink and turned on one of those spigots. The Amoses had hot water running right into the house. I let it run for a second to warm up and I put the dish rag in the bottom of the sink so the splashing wasn't too loud. When the water was good and hot, I stuck the jelly jar underneath it until it was filled to the brim. So I started down the hall. Todd's door came open easy as anything. I tiptoed over to his bed. He was deep asleep and his hands were crossed on his chest like he was ready for the graveyard. I dipped my middle finger in the water. It felt like the perfect temperature. I held my breath as I picked up one of Todd's chubby hands. One of the older boys at the home told me, if you dip someone's hand in a glass of warm water whilst they are asleep, they don't have a choice but to pee on the bed. It's something about chemistry and biology, making some value in your guts open, valve in your guts open up, and then whoop, zoop, sloop, you've got a wet bed. I started to dip Todd's fingers in the water, but I couldn't dip more than two fingers at a time. Todd's bed stayed as dry as the desert. I tried holding Todd's hand flat and pouring the water over it, but he still didn't wet the bed. Finally, I decided to just pour the water on his pajama pants. I pulled the blanket and the sheet down and just emptied the jar. His face twitched a couple of times, and for a minute, it looked like his eyes were going to come open, but they stayed shut. He smiled, and the warm water from the jelly jar opened up that little valve, and whoop, zoop, sloop, he soaked his sheets. I tiptoed out of the room and down the hall and out the door. My favorite saying in the whole world is, he who laughs last, laughs best. So I put my hand over my mouth and whispered, ha, ha, ha. I picked up my suitcase and walked to the street. Man, I was on the lam. I was just like public enemy number one. If J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI saw me now, I'd be in some real serious hot water.